Horse barrel more because of the four hit, but this is, yeah, like it, it's good. Oh my, that's the entire enemy team. Respect, respectfully. So hello gamers and welcome back to my weapon ranking series. Today we are going to be covering the carbine class, which is a pretty massive class full of a lot of very bad guns and a lot of very good guns. Comment your favorite carbine down below and make sure to like the video. But yeah, let's just start it off with the M4A1, one of the good carbines. Now the M4A1 is kind of trash for range like most carbines are. It drops down to 19 at range, but it does have a CQC three hit kill as well as some pretty good CQC stats like a very fast reload time and the ability to two hit to the head if you're using short barrel and 2545 it also does have 2545 which i do recommend because it's a direct upgrade to every gun it's on the problems with this gun are kind of low velocity pretty trash damage at range and a pretty all right three hit kill range like it's not great but it's okay but the other stats more than make up for that and honestly i feel like it's better than the m16a3 at this point because like it is super accurate and yes it doesn't do great range damage but i prefer the cqc3 hit and the m16a3 just doesn't have the recoil that makes me want to use it at range so i'm going to give this one a a 5 out of 5. Honestly, I feel like it's better than the M16A3 at this point. A little bit less RPM, a little bit worse min damage, but it has the CQC3 hit as well as a full stock and lower recoil overall. Next up though, we have the G36K, which I have over 1400 kills on it. Apparently, I don't have anything equipped on this loadout. But yeah, this is a 3 hit kill to about 50 studs. And yes, it does drop to a 6 hit kill at very far ranges, but it has really good ranges, especially for a carbine. Great pen for a carbine and pretty decent overall fire rate, recoil, reload speed, pen, velocity, a lot of stats that makes it more of like an assault rifle, but it does have the six hit kill at range. But honestly, this is another five out of five. And for me, I'm going to be real. I like this more than the M4A1. When I was using my alt account, I was actually using this gun pretty much exclusively for the first few ranks. It's an overall great gun. It works fine at range because amazing four hit kill range. Yes, it's received many nerfs, but after its initial buff and then 300 conversion, it has just been great. Don't use 300 conversion anymore. 300 sucks. I don't recommend it really at all but then next up we have the m4 it does have a little bit more recoil than it did before and it is a burst so if you're a low rank i don't recommend it because it's more like a g11 type burst where you can't hyper burst it but if you're good at bursting it it is extremely good 950 rpm the highest so far on the list and a two hit kill head a three hit kill pretty far yes it is a six hit kill at range but with a great headshot multiplier it probably won't be a six hit kill too often if you're good at hitting heads and a way better three hit kill range than the m4a1 except for being a burst this is literally a objectively better than the m 4 one in every way with like lower recoil the same attachment compatibility a faster reload by a little bit overall an extremely good gun however because it's a burst and the burst got a nerf and because of the m 16 existence which i'm gonna be real when it really comes down to it the advantage of the m 4 one over the m 16 is the three hit kill this actually has a three hit kill and so does the m 16 they both have a two hit kill head but the m 16 4 just has better velocity and better min damage so there's not a ton of reason to use this it does have a little bit better rpm and a little bit less recoil but i don't think it's enough so i'm gonna give it a four out of five because it does have some advantages and it is still extremely good but it isn't like a top tier gun and then next up we have the l22 now the l22 this update is not bad i actually found that t-break is kind of helpful not gonna lie maybe use pistol grip as well but t-break just kind of lowers the overall recoil if you use compensator it has a lot of vertical kick but the thing about this gun is that it's range recoil but pretty low recoil overall plus now that has 24 min it is a somewhat effective four hit kill at all ranges but if you use hollow point, it can be a three hit kill in close range while still being a five hit kill at any range, which is not bad because before it was almost a seven hit kill with that because it got like, like three more min damage. And I'm going to be real. This makes it pretty good. I'm not going to lie. It's not the best gun in the game. Guns that just kind of do it better. But now I'm going to be giving it a three out of five. It used to be like a two or like a one, but because of the min damage buff and hollow point being really good, it's not amazing. I am just running into the entire enemy team so I can get a lot of kills, but it's not necessarily the best gun, but it definitely has some redeeming stuff. It makes it actually pretty good i do like it with hollow point a ton of damage draw not great pen not great velocity and overall the m4a1 is kind of just going to do you better but this is actually a pretty solid gun after the buff next up we have the scar pdw now the scar pdw is weird i don't feel like it's necessarily better than the m4a1 but it does have some nice features first off it has a two hit kill head by default a pretty nice three hit kill range that is a lot farther than the m4a1 and honestly might have lower recoil it is extremely accurate yes it doesn't hit too hard at range and yes it doesn't shoot quite as fast but i'm gonna be real because of a few different things this is a five out of five gun because overall it does have some insanely powerful and nice features first off it has two great conversions nine by 19 which gives you a four kill by 100 extra rpm and a 
50 round drum for exactly the same reload speed, as well as the Scar HPW, which lowers your RPM a little bit and increases recoil and gives you a 20 round mag, but gives you a two hit kill to the torso in close range, which is really good. I'm going to be completely honest. This is an extremely good gun because of all that stuff. It's not necessarily the best gun in any particular aspect. It even has a full stock analog barrel though, but because it has so much to it, I feel like it's a great gun to get a lot of kills on and to use overall. So it's a five out of five, not because it's objectively the best gun in the game or anything, but because it just has so much there, so much to enjoy and so much to use. But next up, we have the AKU-12. Now the AKU-12 is, I'm going to be real, it's not amazing anymore, mostly because of 9 mil conversion. 9 mil is actually still pretty good. You have to be pretty good at bursting it, but it does have a thousand RPM and a two hit kill head up close. And honestly, uh, it's still pretty good. Like, I'm not going to lie. The PPK-12, in my opinion, is the best burst gun in the entire game for overall use because two hit kill head up close, three hit kill body, 1000 RPM, and it can hyper burst. It's not necessarily the best anymore, but because this gun is kind of just a better version of the M4A1 in a few ways. First off, it has a better three hit kill range, does a little bit more damage, and fires a little bit faster, but it has some pretty serious downsides of a little bit more recoil and not as fast of a reload, which is kind of two of the biggest things about the M4A1. I'm going to give this one a five out of five as well. It does have some downsides, but like nine mil is... If if you're really good, it is kind of just the best burst, except for maybe the G11, but honestly, this will destroy the G11 in close range. Next up, we have the Groza 1. Now, the Groza 1 is a strange gun because default, this gun is like a 3 out of 5. It's not bad. It's probably the weakest 7.62 in the entire game. However, with 5.56, 750 RPM, extremely low recoil, good headshot multi, 2 hit kill head, 3 hit kill body to pretty far. And honestly, other than the fact that the recoil feels kind of weird, it's really accurate. It does feel weird. So if you don't like the recoil, this is like a 1 out of 10 don't use it and yes you can fix that recoil but you have to use something that basically makes it so you have to use alt aim which is ballistics tracker and sideways grip which lowers the recoil to pretty much non-existence however you have to alt aim it and i don't like that because otherwise the camera recoil is just literally impossible to use this is another five out of five it just absolutely destroys some of those other conversions like aug 2762 and stuff which i've talked about in the past and i've said they're all really good but this is just better but next up we have the ots 126 now the ots 126 is a pretty good carbine it does have have some really nice stats like a big magazine with a fast reload but i'm gonna be real i don't see a ton of reason to use this over the pp bison at this point it has a great four hit kill range three hit kill up close two hit kill head and it's pretty decent but i don't think it's amazing yeah it has a big mag and all but i don't really get the hype too much for this it's a really good gun uh it's got some great advanced stats like fast velocity and big magazine and stuff like that but yeah i'm gonna give this one a four out of five it's not top tier in my opinion but then next up we have the ak-12c now the ak-12c did get kind of a change it can now two hit kill head up close however it does have a slower reload time which is kind of annoying but if you use nine mil it gets its reload time back and it still has 700 rpm two hit kill head and decent damage at range actually a four hit kill torso i'm gonna be real like this conversion is nice and all and the default gun is fine, but I'm going to be real. Rosa 3, Rosa 156 is kind of better. At this point, this is really up there though. Definitely one of the better carbines in the game. 9x39 still has the blazing fast reload of like 1.9 seconds. So I will be giving this one a 4 out of 5. Originally, I was like, wow, this is going to be so cracked. But then when I saw like Aug A3, Para buff, and like a bunch of other buffs, that kind of just made the guns better. This is not that great. It's pretty good, but it's not great. Next up though, we have the Honey Badger, which as you can see from my setup, I only use as a meme. I don't like this gun. It's not fun for me. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Basically, it's just like generic carbine kind of high initial recoil but pretty low recoil overall three a kill up close with hollow point i mean like long barrel was kind of what made this really great and now that long barrel is kind of not that great for that particular role of making your min damage range super far it's fine now but it's not great i'll give this one a four out of five because i feel like it still deserves it but then next up we have the k1a now k1a 223 is still very good k1a hollow point is really good this gun has kind of fallen out of the meta and the reason for that is pretty simple it doesn't have a big mag in Anymore. It is a 4 to a 6 hit kill, 2 to 3 or not, and a 3 to a 7 hit kill with hollow point at 900 RPM. Add velocity, the recoil is strange, but pretty low with 2 to 3, not gonna lie. It kind of beams in close range with 2 to 3. But I'm gonna be real, this is a fine CQC gun that was really good because of the extent of mag. But now there's just a lot of PDWs that do it better. Not the worst gun in the game by any means, it's still extremely solid. And I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 5. It's not like 3 out of 5 material, but it's just not gonna be the best gun in the game. But I feel like it does have some nice stats of just 
it can be. But then next up, we have the SR3M. Now, the SR3M, I actually have a full setup on a different loadout because Carbine actually has two different setups. Oh, three. I think you can have three classes with Carbine, if not four. Carbine is like in every class. It's funny because it's not really the most used class in the game. One of the more popular, definitely, though. Maybe even like third. But yeah, the SR3M. Now, the SR3M and the AS Val are kind of balanced, in my opinion, although I kind of just prefer the AS Val. The AS Val has a lower recoil, is very quiet with a suppressor, better three hit kill range, five hit kill all ranges. This is a six hit kill range. I'm not going to lie, this does have some upsides, but when you really compare it to some of the guns that shoot a little bit slower, it kind of just does what this does a little bit better, except for the RPM. It's not too great, and the fact that if you use Extendamac, the reload is like, eh, I don't like the reload. 90 uh, reserve ammo is pretty trash as well. 4 out of 5, still extremely solid, not the best. There's a carbine that kind of does it better in every way, but we will get to that pretty soon. Then we have the Groza 4. I'm going to be real, this gun sucks. They finally gave it some pretty needed buffs. Originally, it had a 20 round mag, worse velocity, worse ranges, and it was trash. And now it has a 30 round mag by default with some pretty good stats. It has better velocity, so less annoying drop. Slightly better 3 hit kill range now, and it can 2 hit kill head. It has 700 RPM, but when you really think about it, you can get stuff like that from the Groza 1 with better velocity, better pen, better headshot damage, better rate of fire. I'm gonna be real, Groza 1556 destroys this gun, and it's not bad. It's still kind of a laser beam, not gonna lie, and it doesn't have as annoying recoil as the Groza 1, but for me, the Groza 1 recoil is not even a problem. So I'm gonna give this one a 3 out of 5 because of the Groza 1 one being a lower rank and being better and this is also not even my go-to for integrally suppressed guns because it's kind of loud it's still really really loud the radar isn't the big problem it's the fact that this gun is still so loud like this guy can tell i'm here because this gun is like Next up, though, we have the MC-51. Now, the MC-51 is really good now. If you want an integrally suppressed carbine, this is how it sounds by default. That's pretty quiet. If you use a suppressor and silent, because it has silent, even though it's already this quiet, it will be so quiet, no one will ever be able to hear you. If you use oil filter and silent, the casings hitting the ground is actually louder than the gun itself. So yeah, if you want to integrally suppress carbine, this is great. It doesn't shoot super fast, but it's a four hit kill at any range and a two hit kill to the torso and a two hit kill anywhere on the body with hollow point, which is pretty good because it's still a five hit kill low ranges with hollow point. And I'm going to be real, this is not a long range gun regardless. So really, really good. The recoil is also just pretty nice. It feels a lot like the AG3, nothing like the G3, but a lot like the AG3. It actually has more RPM now than the G3 and AG3. However, if you use the long barrel, it will increase your two-hit kill torso range, but lower your rate of fire, which is definitely worth it because 40 stud two-hit kill range is not bad for the RPM and stuff. So I will be giving this one a five out of five because yes, it's not necessarily the best for all ranges, but the fact that like stealth wise, it is amazing. If you're going for stealth, this is the best gun for stealth. But next up though, we have the Fal 50.63 Para. It does have the ability to two-hit kill with hollow point. The last time I used this gun apparently was that hollow point video from like four months ago. So I don't really use this gun anymore, but I have 1400 kills on it. It does have five by six, which is pretty nice. It is 44 to 23. Yes, it has more recoil than it used to, but I'm going to be real. This gun is not that inaccurate. It actually has a lower default recoil than the Foul 50, but it also has a full stock for some reason. I got to put on compensator, man, because that recoil. Okay, this is better. It also reloads faster and actually has better hits to kill and still has 44 max. Well, the Foul 50, I think, has 40 max now. So four more damage, allowing it to kill with one limb and one head, which is pretty cracked. I'm not going to lie. Like, I just killed that guy with two shots because one limb and one head, which you can't do on the Foul 50. Faster reload for close range, better recoil. I'm going to be real. This gun at this point might be better than the Foul 50 because the Foul 50 used to be able to three hit kill torso ranges. This is a five hit kill and a four hit kill torso. Foul 50 is still a four hit kill ranges, but lower recoil, faster reload. This is better. It's a five out of five. Really on par with the Foul 50, if not better now. The Fouls are still extremely good. They're top tier if you want high damage and high RPM. They really shouldn't have this kind of recoil. I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't know why they're accurate at all. In real life, they don't use fouls on auto because they're so inaccurate. Next up, though, we have the 1858 Carbine. I'm going to be real. They ruined what made this gun cool. And before that point, it was never really good at anything in particular. It has a couple of objectively better stats than the Henry 4570. It has a little bit more RPM, a slightly bigger magazine, and a faster reload. Pretty cool, right? However, it has half the torso kill range, and it's, it's just bad. It's just not a good gun. It is just not good at all. Like, there's no reason to use this gun over your average sniper rifle because 40 stud one hit kill range not good versus 85 or something and if you use long barrel that has awful handling anyway and really bad recoil that just makes it not even possible to shoot it that fast anyway so don't use this gun because 
Henry is just kind of better. It's still pretty good. I'm going to give it a three out of five because it has some redeeming stuff that make it a little bit better than the Henry in a couple of ways. But since the Henry is better, I can't give it anything higher than that. Henry's a five out of five. This is like, it's all right. It's not bad. It's just not the best. If you ran short build, you used to have a 35 stud torso kill range, which wasn't that great, but you had fan fire like the 1858 where you could fire extremely fast, which made it actually pretty nice for close range. Now that's just gone. Like that was the thing that would have given this at least a four out of five, but it's gone. Overall, it's fine, I guess. Just just really not that great. Nice job, buddy. Next up, we have the AK-105. Now, the AK-105 by default is awful. Don't use it. However, if you run Bar Sparrow and 5.56, which I recommend you pre-buy, because honestly, by default, this gun sucks so bad. It is so objectively bad. Basically, statistically, same thing as the Type 88, the default one, except it has more recoil. However, if you run 5.56 and Bar Sparrow, this is arguably better than Bar Sparrow on the AK-103. It's more accurate, and that's about it, but the fact that it's more accurate makes it extremely good, because AK-103, pretty accurate with Bar Sparrow, not gonna lie. This is even more accurate. This is next level accuracy. And an 850 RPM 4 to 5 hit, pretty good. And the problem is, AK-103 can run 8P because it has a 4 hit kill all ranges. This is a 5 hit kill at range, which is, you know, not the best, but still worth using over the AK-103 if you don't like recoil because it doesn't really have recoil. So yeah, this is gonna get a 5 out of 5. Personally, I like the AK-103 bars barrel more because of the 4 hit, but this is, yeah, like, it, it's good. Oh my, that's the entire enemy team. Respect respectfully next up we have the jury the jury has some interesting conversions it does have exotic slugs and stuff but i'm gonna be real it's not great it is really not that great at all it can one hit kill head all ranges but has some pretty awful recovery speed and can't torso kill at all and also you have to single load now which is kind of annoying unless you're using speed loader and then it has the worst reload time ever i hate speed loader exotic slugs is pretty cool you can one hit kill to the body but kind of awful like spread like the spread is really not good at all. And I'm going to be real. Overall, not a fan of this gun. It's fine, I guess. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 because exotic slugs are actually pretty nice. It's the only primary weapon in the game to have exotic slugs. The only other gun in the game to have it is the M79, which only has one bullet. So, but yeah, 3 out of 5. Next up, we have the CAC SRR. It's not the most amazing gun in the game, except it has 400 RPM and can one hit kill to the head at any range, which is uh, kind of solid. I'm not going to lie. It also reloads faster and has faster recovery and way more RPM than the jury. And I'm gonna be real this is not only more fun but kind of better because with 400 rpm just like the tcr you can easily kill a guy with two shots in close range if you're pretty good at hitting follow-ups and you can one shot at any range it has some drop but like not a ton and with you know this much rpm you can kind of get away with it so overall i am going to give this one a four out of five because this is definitely second best stealthy carbine mc51 is kind of quieter however this actually has the same sound effect as the aws with silent ammo yes the aws has silent and i think this also has silent so it can be even silenter it's like os but silent Silenter. Basically, just check out this gun. It's not the best, but I think I prefer it over the jury in like every case. One of the more fun carbines, and if you're like, I want a gun that's kind of different, I want to try something out. It just gives you a very different experience. I'll tell you that right now. But next up, we have the Gyrojet carbine. I have 100 kills on it, and I was using it and having some fun. But basically, this is like the M107, but low recoil, but kind of worse in most ways. But it has about the same RPM as the M107 at about, I think, 220. It can torso kill at long range, one hit kill to the head at any range, and you know, has no recoil. The problem with it is that it has a lot of drop and a lot of spread. Well, not a ton of spread, but it has spread, which is annoying. What I mean by spread is it has choke. Choke is this funny feature where your bullet doesn't actually go straight. It has this RNG, which tells it, hey, I'm going to go over here this time. And hey, I'm going to go over here this time, which is pretty inconvenient. So if you don't want that, use the M107. The M107 has like triple the velocity and no choke. But this fires a little bit faster and is capable of firing at maximum RPM because yeah, it has no recoil. I'm going to be completely real. This is a five out of five. If you're extremely good with this, this is honestly a bad best long range gun in the game. It can one shot torso at long range, which is just kind of ridiculous for the RPM and everything because one shot to the body. Think about it. One shot to the body at this rate of fire. Next up, we have the X95R. The default gun is very good. It fires very fast, but personally, I love this gun with 300. It is objectively busted beyond belief now. Three hit kill up close, two hit kill head up close, 850 RPM, 150 reserve, so just extra reserve. Very accurate recoil. And yes, it does do 19 min, so that is a six hit kill. However, However, it has this funny thing called the torso multiplier, so it can actually 5 hit kill at range. That's fun. So objectively, in every way, it's just better than the M4A1. There's like not a single reason to use the M4A1, except for maybe slightly faster reload. This has a 2 hit kill head, a better 3 hit kill range, a 5 hit kill at range, more RPM, more reserve ammo. The default gun is also extremely powerful, and it actually has like a G36 conversion. But the funny thing is, the G36, it got a nerf. It doesn't 4 hit kill at range now. This, on the other hand, 
four hit kills at all ranges with 5 out of 6, which I don't even recommend because just use 300. This is easily a 5 out of 5. It has three 5 out of 5 ammo types, and honestly, the recoil buff was probably not needed. The default gun could have gotten better recoil, but not the other conversions, because the other conversions were already really good. I always thought 300 conversion was great, and now it's just best carbine in the game, hands down. Honestly, this might be better than C782762. But last up, we have the HK51B. The HK51B now has a squad barrel, which is kind of cool. This gun is strange. I could even give it a 5 out of 5, but I'm going to be real. It's not great. The drop is kind of horrible. It's like MAC-10 drop. It drops from 41 to 22 and about 70 studs, which is pretty bad. And it also starts dropping at 20 studs, so you won't even be able to 3 hit kill that far at all. It doesn't have any special multipliers, but it still has almost 1000 RPM and... 100 rounds, so yeah, the recoil is awful, but up close, this absolutely destroys everything because yeah, you can just shoot 100 rounds, so it doesn't really matter too much. This is a 4 out of 5. It could be a 5 out of 5, but here's the thing. Its performance drops in about the same range that its ranges drop. It's like maybe 100 studs. Impossible. You will not consistently or maybe even get kills at all at that range. Like, it falls off. Okay, still good. Wow, those guys must have been weak or something. And yes, the recoil is like super RNG, so might be able to just randomly hit a guy a bunch of times in a row, which would be pretty cool, not gonna lie, but it's it's bad at range. So I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 5, but up close, this is honestly, if you're bad, it's like the best gun you can use. It's up there with auto shotguns, the PPSH, maybe even better than the PPSH because the recoil just makes it so you just kind of aim at a guy and then they die. Anyways, gamers, that was ranking every single carbine inside of Phantom Forces. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to like and sub, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.